is National Foster Care Month, and this pandemic has created an unprecedented challenge for child advocates. That's right, Dylan. And around the country, family courts are still closed. Kids are aging out of the system with nowhere to go. The nonprofit CASA, which stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates, is one organization working harder than ever to help from afar. It's really hard right now because I just get so scared to even open my apartment door and leave my house. I haven't been able to work and I don't know if, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be okay. Social isolation is a huge problem for many of the families that we're working with, especially families who are already struggling. We're dealing with a population that sometimes feels like there's no help available to them or that they're out there and they're by themselves. Court is basically canceled for everything but dire emergencies. There are no visits between parents and their children. If parents are expecting to have a child returned, reunified with them, it's not going to happen. It's really hard trying to speak to lawyers and caseworkers just to get a communication system open on what's going on with the case. There's also kids that they're homeless right now, you know, because they don't have that connection to their foster parents. Or they leave home because they're being abused. So the situation that's happening now is extremely important that the youth understand and they know without a doubt that CASA will always have the back well, of them. We're joining us from there. the New York City chapter of joining us from the New York City chapter of CASA is board member Sherelle Starr. Sherelle, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Al. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I know this is awfully personal to you because you actually spent several years in foster care yourself. How do you hope you're changing the system? You know, I think by, you know, just sharing my story, really talking about my time in care and being an advocate for youth who are still going through the things that I went through when I was in foster care is sort of how I am trying to help other youth right now. You know, at the end of the video, one of your volunteers said it's important that these kids uh, know that CASA will always have their back. So let's take the pandemic aside. On a normal day, how does the organization help? Well, on a normal day, CASA volunteers, because all CASA um, uh, uh, sort of team members are volunteers, they are actually having that one-on-one -on -one connection with youth. They are going into the court system to actually speak on behalf of youth. They're making sure that um, things that youth need don't fall through the cracks. You know, they're speaking with teachers. They're helping uh, kids actually get the things that they need so that they can be uh, productive, so that they can be reunified with their parents if possible. And they're also going above and beyond and helping parents who are in these situations actually get what they need so they can hopefully be reunified with their kids, um, find jobs, actually just be that point person for youth who desperately need just a positive role model around them and someone like that a volunteer said to just have their backs. And Cheryl, you certainly already have a challenging job. Now throw in the coronavirus and the situation for foster youth has become even more challenging. Many court proceedings are on hold. In-person visits are suspended. Lots of families aren't allowed to be reunited right now. How is CASA stepping up to help in this particular situation? Well, CASA volunteers are absolutely amazing. I mean, they are going above and beyond using technology to stay in touch with their youth, um, you know, speaking with parents as much as possible, just basically using everything at their disposal to make sure that they are able to keep communicating and keep youth getting the things that they need. Um, they're also sort of advocating for things that are falling through the cracks. Um, right now, we've got youth who are aging out onto the streets um, who have no place to go because we have not suspended uh, aging out processes in a number of states, New York being one of them. And so they are using their voices to really advocate to ask governors across the country in New York, as well as the 41 other states that have not suspended the aging out process, to actually suspend that right now and actually have a moratorium on it so that youth are not aging out the sh onto the streets. Um, right now, we know the pandemic has impacted everyone, COVID-19. And so there are no jobs out there. There are no places for these kids to go as far as homeless, uh, uh, as far as homes. Uh, shelters are filled. And even if they weren't filled, um, you know, you want to send youth who are aging out into shelters right now because of COVID. And so what we're asking is that there be a moratorium on suspending the aging out process right now in New York, New Jersey, as well as the 41 other states who have not suspended it. And I know you're hoping to send that message to Governor Cuomo today, but what, what can people 
at home do to kind of help push some of the states who have not yet kind of, uh, you know, agreed to not do the aging out right now, putting, putting a uh, hold on that? You know, that's an excellent question. I mean, a tweet at your governor leader, your uh, state leadership, your governors, uh, the hashtag we're using is pause aging out in why, but you can use pause aging out for any state that you're in um, that has not suspended this. Um, make sure that you are staying in communication and also make sure that you are supporting organizations like CASA beyond just this immediate period of suspending aging out. Um, we really want to make sure that people understand that um, programs like CASA are at, um, might have their, uh, excuse me, might have a lot of their donations suspended. They might have their budgets cut because of the uh, crisis that we're in right now. And so it's very important for people to support by uh, volunteering, by also making donations at casa-nyc.org because there will be budget for shortfalls because of COVID-19. And we want to make sure that the programs that CASA supports and the youth they support, they continue doing this, not only right now, um, but all, uh, over the long term. Well, Sherelle, thank you so much for all that your group does. For more information on CASA NYC, head to thirdhourtoday.com.